Hi, Jacob Field here. I'm just going to quickly take you through the new functionality that we're all really excited to be launching. Uh, it is still in uh, beta, which means that it, it still does have a few little kinks that we need to iron out. Uh, we have got a, a, a half a dozen or so improvements in the interface and how you interact with it, which might make things a little bit simpler. Um, it is all there and ready to go. We've been having some amazing results with uh, some of the strategies that we've been able to put together uh, by adding and removing rules. Um, and I did do a demonstration of this uh, last week in the webcast, which a, a lot of you uh, put your hand up to try out the, the beta version when we are available. So um, there's actually over 100 of you that have uh, said, yes, please um, put the, the beta onto my account straight away. Um, so there, there are a few performance issues with uh, the page and the, and the platform. Um, sometimes if you do a search across the whole country, it takes up to about 30 seconds uh, or a minute. Um, if there's anything longer than that, something has gone wrong, um, let us know. We are happy to work with you very closely in, in getting some, some good results out of it straight away. Um, and obviously, feedback is really important. So if you do have any suggestions, things that are not very clear, we are going to be rolling out uh, helps and help and tutorial documents. So you will be sort of left a little bit in the dark to start with. Um, but we are here to help. Um, really exciting. We've been able to generate some amazing results with the strategies that we're putting together. It's super simple. Um, it's really powerful. Uh, and I think it's going to change the way a lot of you find suburbs and invest and even, even understand a little bit about why we put strategies together. We have got an amazing uh, stable of experts coming on board to give their strategies, uh, their secret source, I suppose, using the rules. So you are will be able to use them as a baseline to then go away and tweak to your own devices. Um, and But for now, it, it really is the do-it-yourself uh, design dashboard that, that is, is launching. So let's jump right in. Go to your dashboard page. Um, uh, it's in the locate silo here. So the locate design your own uh, button will be activated on your account. This loads up uh, the design your own uh, page by default. I've actually got a number of rules already in here. It does cache them uh, in your browser. So next time you log in, they will be presented there. This is how it will appear to you when you haven't used it before with no rules uh, in front of you. Let's start adding them. Okay, so big disclaimer, a little bit of, uh, and I, this is gonna be improved with performance over the next couple of days. Um, it might be worth limiting things to a particular state to start with. That just helps with uh, performance. Let's just say Queensland. Okay, so you've got three different layers of, of, of rules that you can apply state, then local government area, then suburbs. So I'm adding a state uh, rule. You've got uh, only one option in the drop down, so you're moving left to right in the options. Let's select the name and then you can select the options. There's nothing to select here for the other two options, and you don't need to put a value in the right hand side here. Um, this is state level. Um, and this will then apply. So we're only looking in the suburb of, on the state of Queensland. Let's go into local government area. Uh, here we're presented with actual or trending options. Uh, let's do a rule around population. Let's look for local government areas where population is trending upwards. So you've got a lot of different rules you can add here for a local government area. Uh, this is just something I'm putting together. I've got some really good results with these six rules already. Um, and it's great for it as an example. So you can you can, you can tweak and, and, and adapt to your own devices, but let's look for local government areas trending population upwards uh, by an aggregate percentage over last year. So you can see how each drop down leads into the next in terms of a sentence. And let's say we want to see population growth of 1%. So you're entering that in, in percentage terms, 1%. Uh, we are rolling out in terms of when you go into the value, it will tell you some examples of, of the types of values you can enter, a minimum and maximum amount, uh, just so you know, instead of 101% uh, in terms of percentage terms, you only need to type in 1% here. Uh, and that will mean that population has increased 1% uh, in the last in the year period. So if we add that rule, you can actually go and process that straight away. So you can click on process. That is going to go away every rule that you add, or you can wait until the end. You can click on process. What it's doing then, it's going away, uh, finding all of the individual months across Queensland. Uh, we're going back 15 years in a lot of cases with our data sets. Uh, we've found 347,000, sorry, 34,770 
individual months where a suburb has increased in population by 1% in a previous year period. So that's how it all fits together. We we'll found 34.7, uh, yeah, so that's how many buy points. Uh, immediate growth for the aggregate or average of each of those buy points for the three months afterwards, we saw a little bit of a dip. So 1.7%, that is compared against the whole country, so the rest of the country. Um, for just those individual suburbs, how does it compare against the rest of the country? So you're, this is basically saying for in the, when there's seen at 1% population growth in a suburb, immediately after that occurs, you usually see a little bit of a dip by 1.7% compared to the average. But in the year after that, we, we see a 4.1% outperformance compared to the normal. So there is actually a positive that's saying there is a positive correlation between 1% population growth and uh, everything else and the average uh, of plus 4.1% in the next year. And then you can see, you can click on this, is actually currently 260 suburbs in the country that have experienced 1% uh, population growth or above in the previous year through to today. So this is all live. Um, the, you can click on, whenever you see the current suburbs, you can actually click on that and it will load up all of the suburbs in our explore page. So. I won't click on that yet because 260 is not really going to mean anything. Let's start adding some more rules. So let's also look. I like to see population growth, but I don't like to see uh, too many new builds happening in the area. So let's uh, let's make sure that we're not seeing too many new uh, dwellings being built. Um, I'm going to use this in raw terms. Let's say we're seeing below uh, an absolute total of 220. So this is me playing around. I know. Um, so I'll use 200. Uh, anytime you're sort of seeing suburbs with more than 200 new dwellings, uh, it's, 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 it's quite high, it's very high. Um, it's going to take out all of the inner city Brisbane, which has a lot of unit risk, um, inner, inner city Melbourne, etc. I have had a play around with this. Uh, 200 seems to be the sweet spot. Uh, let's add that rule. So it's now suburb, uh, Stadies Queensland population trending upwards by 1% in the previous year, under 200 dwellings approved. Um, in the previous year period. Uh, let's now move on to the suburb level. Uh, I like to see, in terms of our big greens, etc., I like to see uh, yields. Uh, what would we, We've got a number of different options. So this is at the suburb level. Actual, we've got heaps uh, of different variables that we can assess at the suburb level. Some really interesting ones like ripple effect, uh, last you know, you know, previous price growth, but things like public housing concentration, how that changes, how that affects value. Metric health, which is our ticks and crosses, which is familiar with Ripe House users. Uh, this is probably the big the big four that I, that I typically look at, or really only the big three, is sales, volumes, yields, days on market. Um, first one I've, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add here, let's uh, remove all of the, the, the lower... Uh, or the edge case suburb. So we don't really want to look at the regionals that don't really turn over at all in terms of sales volumes. Let's make sure that we're getting uh, at least um, six sales volumes is a number that I found uh, removes a lot of those. There's got to be six actual transactions in that suburb per month and it removes a lot of the lower turnover suburbs that may have a lot of variance. Um, have a play around with that. Uh, another big driver of growth that is an assumption that I've always uh, always held uh, and now we can actually back check and prove is yields. Um, so each of these metrics at the suburb level you can actually see in actual terms or in trending terms um, when it's in actual. So let's click on yield. It's currently, so actual yields are currently above. Now I've got a couple of options. So you can say yields are an, above uh, 6%. Uh, or this is probably the more important one, yields are above a percentage value of the suburb's historical max. So we actually look for yields to be at a high point in the cycle. That's telling us that rents have increased recently, but price growth hasn't occurred in line with that. So, um, you know, there's lots of, of reasons. So check out some of our strategy ebook. Uh, and technology book around the, the psychology of it um, or even a, a recent webcast recording but we like to look for suburbs where uh, the current yields are at a high point in the cycle for that suburb so this is how you do it um, let's have a look for yields in the top 90 or, or above uh, 95 the, the 95th percentile for that suburbs historical max um, let's have a look for actual uh, days on market uh, below um, 
let's have a look for below 90 days so we can transact quite quickly and easily in the suburb. Um, that's neither here nor there. Um, I'm, I'm just adding that to remove a lot of those edge case or regional areas. Um, and then you've got some some interesting, you can, um, you know, you, you can look for, for yield in terms of trend. So we might add that there. Let's make sure that yield is actually trending upwards and not on the downward slope. So it hasn't uh, peaked already. Um, so you can actually compare yield from the last year. So this is similar to the population trend. So making sure yields have actually trended up by at least 1% in the last year. And that's just saying that they aren't on the way down already. So you can keep adding rules here to your heart's content. Um, there's no particular, uh, we are rolling out OR as an operator to compare rules. Um, at the moment, it's just AND. Um, so there's no particular reason to add order. But then you can click on the process button. Um, oh, sorry, I'm just catching up with, with myself. Click on the process button, that's going to run those rules through the system. It's going to go away and find. Hasn't found many buy rules. Um, in this case, I'd say that the sample size is too low. Um, it's, it's not even worth continuing there. We're not getting enough suburbs back. Um, I might take off a couple of these rules. Um, Okay, I've just taken off the, the yield trend. So now I've got a few more buy points. We've been able to find with those rules only 121 buy points. Next quarter growth when all of these things are in alignment is 2.7%. Next year growth uh, is obviously extremely good. So when all of these things are in alignment, we've seen a very strong correlation between good stock turnover, population trends, not very many builds happening, so stock has tightened, uh, days on market is manageable, and yields at a high point in the cycle. So with just those things, we've got outstanding likelihood of imminent growth um, of 23.6% in the next year. And you can click on the current nine suburbs that have been found. Um, that will take you straight into them. We've got Morton Bay, which has obviously been featured very heavily in a lot of our reports. This is not by accident. <laughs> um, this is the back checking engine. So we've got one in Ipswich, quite a few in Morton Bay and uh, two in the Gold Coast. So you can see how we get to it. Uh, you can come back in if you don't want to be as heavy on the, the yield, but you want to bring sales volumes at a high point in the cycle. You can do uh, you know, so many different things. And another interesting thing is looking for renovation potential. You can come in and add, uh, is the suburb's current price spread um, above 1.4% uh, is, is what I've been working for. So one4 so that's meaning the lower to upper quartile, the difference there is, is 40%. Um, you can add that rule and that will go away and find those suburbs that have that margin for renovate for profit strategies um, of that 40% differential. So you can buy at the lower quartile um, and, and sell at the upper. Obviously, the capital growth in organic terms is not as strong, but then you've got the upside of the renovate for profit potential. You can click on the current suburbs. Um, and go from there. So look, I would love to hear your feedback. Uh, please get in touch. We are really going to work very closely on improving this functionality in the short term. Let us know how, you, how you're finding uh, the suburb recommendations. Is it all making sense? Um, yeah, and I hope you enjoy. Thank you.